Good morning, CVCS family. I hope everybody's doing great. We're almost two weeks down. Um, keep pushing through. Uh, let's make the best of this situation. Um, so I decided to do the video today out on the High Bridge Trail. Um, really enjoy this great weather that we've been having. Um, and, and you know, this is really my favorite time of year. You know, the flowers are blooming, the weather's great, you know, the trees are filling out, and normally baseball is around. Hopefully that makes its way back uh, here shortly. But most importantly, as we get this time of year to stop and reflect and think and celebrate what Jesus did when he went to the cross and when he rose from the grave and, and what that means for us. Um, you know, this, this time of year also, if you guys were in school, we would be practicing and, and preparing for our fitness test. And I know when I just said those words, fitness test, some of you guys cringe and you're like, oh no, fitness test. Um, some of you really enjoy the challenge and, and rise up to that challenge and, and accomplish great things and work really hard. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is it doesn't matter if it's a fitness test or if it's schoolwork or if it's our relationships with our families, with our friends, we all need to work as hard as possible to make sure that the end result is what we want it to be. Um, and in 1 Corinthians, Paul actually, the Apostle Paul talks about a race. Um, so 1 Corinthians chapter 9, starting in verse 24, if you have your Bibles, um, feel free to, uh, to turn there. If you don't have your Bibles, then you can pause the video and, and uh, grab it real quick and come back to it. So 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24, it says, do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a man beating the air. No, I beat my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself would not be disqualified for the prize. So guys here, Paul is saying that our race matters, our life matters, the way that we prepare and approach our life, it, it really matters. Let's say in this, in this race that Paul is talking about, we had a runner that knew well in advance when the race would be, but he decided, ah, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay at home. I'm not gonna train. I'm gonna, you know, eat what I want to when I want to. I'm not gonna go to bed when I, when I'm supposed to, and not get the rest that I need. I'll just show up, you know, at the on race day, and 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 I'll, I'll do all right. How do you think that guy's gonna stand up against the competition? Probably not too good, right? Um, I, I would say that he would probably get smoked. Um, let's say, for instance, maybe there was another runner in the competition that. Um, trained really hard it worked as hard as they had possibly ever worked before and knew going into this race that they would be right there at the end to take first place and so the this runner is just excited and ready and the the official gives the the count ready set go and he takes off and he's flying I mean he's flying past the competition takes the lead and is making his way around the track and then comes around that final turn and maybe as he's coming around that turn, he gets distracted just for a moment by someone in the stands and loses his footing and trips and watches everybody else pass. How demoralizing would that be to work that hard and then get distracted for just a moment? But you know, in our spiritual life, we all have struggled with that. We have all been in places where we look back and we, thought, well, I could have worked a little bit harder in that relationship, or I could have worked a little bit harder to do my best to bring honor and glory to God and not to myself. Uh, we've all been in places where we were distracted, and maybe you're, you're listening to me now, and you're thinking, yeah, it's, maybe you're getting distracted with um, being as popular as you can. Maybe it's, it's about being consumed with sports, or maybe you're you're watching me now and you're you're being distracted by being entertained with a, a television or a, a cell phone or a video game. But if that's you, we have all, in some form or fashion, we've all been there. We have all not not worked hard enough. We have all become distracted. We've taken our eyes off the prize, off the finish line, off of Jesus, 
and we slip and we fall. But Paul wants us to remember that we need to take seriously this race. I, I saw this, this illustration back um, not too long ago. Um, a guy named uh, Francis Chan, who is a, a great teacher of God's Word. Um, this is his illustration. This is something that I saw on YouTube. So I wanted to give credit to him uh, before I did it. But let's take this rope, for instance. Let's say that this rope represents our life. It represents your life. And it, it goes on and it represents eternity because we will spend eternity in one place or another. But let's say that this tiny blue spot right here just represents the time that we will spend on earth. So we've got all of this down here and we've got this tiny little piece that represents our time on earth. Look how tiny this is in comparison. But yet we spend our life and we try and make this tiny little part as comfortable as possible, as entertaining as possible, as easy as possible, as much about me as possible. And we forget about this. We forget about this. We forget about that God has, he impacts this, but he impacts this as well. And he also uses us to impact in the lives of others their eternity. It's, it's so important for us to keep that in mind and keep this race that Paul was talking about in mind and the, the way that we approach our race. Our race is important. And a lot of people, you might be approaching this race and, and you're still entangled with sin. You're still chained up in addiction or um, guilt or shame whatever it might be, but you haven't fully committed your life, you haven't given your life to Jesus, it's, it's hard to run a race when you're tied up. It can't be done. But this time of year, we get to think about what Christ did. He put our shame, our guilt, our sin on his shoulders. He took it upon himself and he went to the cross and he died our death. But three days later, he rose from the grave. He conquered sin. He conquered death. He conquered any chains that could ever bind us up. And he gives us this freedom in him to be able to run without being entangled by sin. Maybe you're watching today and that's you. Maybe you're... The one who's been distracted maybe you're the one who's neglected their relationship with Christ but this is a perfect opportunity you know I, I look I look back on my life and I can pinpoint milestones you know I think about when I graduated high school how great of a day that was when I graduated college and I, I didn't even think I would go to college when when I got married to my best friend who's videotaping me right now how amazing that day was in July when we expect our first son. How great that day is going to be. But guys, the most important day of my life was when I gave my heart to Jesus. And I allowed him to completely change who I am. You know, a, a lot of people now, coronavirus has stolen the opportunity for a lot of people to be able to to celebrate a graduation or their senior season of a sport that they've worked really hard at and maybe the wedding that they dreamed of coronavirus has has stolen that that opportunity but the most important opportunity the more most important decision that you will ever make coronavirus can't steal that that decision can be made today if you don't know jesus the Bible says today is the day for salvation. And the Bible says that when one person comes to know Jesus, that all of heaven stops and celebrates. And, and just think about how awesome that is. Guys, if, if you're at, at any of those points, reach out to somebody. Talk to mom and dad or, or reach out to a teacher or a, a preacher or a Sunday school teacher. Um, reach out to myself or, or Miss Brickhill 
anyone that that you can talk to and just say hey I, I've got to get some some things straight because the, your race matters your race is important not only will God change your eternity but he will give you a plan and a purpose that you can impact somebody else's eternity guys that's the most important part of life is to be able to impact people to be able to live our life for Christ it's so very important so I encourage you after you watch this to to really sit down and think about what Christ did when he went to the cross how much love he displayed when he did that for us reach out to somebody talk to him um, and I pray that today we would hear stories about new milestones in people's lives your race matters um, God loves you I love you let me pray for you and then we'll wrap this thing up Lord we just love you so much we thank you God for the race that you have given each one of us each race is different um, God you have a, a plan and a purpose for each one of us God I pray that we would keep our eyes on the prize that we would continue to focus towards the finish line towards you God that each step along the way that you would just continue to build us up encourage us help us to look more like you pray God that you would put people in our past that we can impact um, that we can tell about you Lord that we don't just talk the talk God but we walk the walk God we pray that each and every day we look more like you thank you for what you did God thank you for that love that you displayed when you sent your son Lord we love you we thank you for your goodness thank you for your love and pray, Lord, that everything that we say and everything that we do would bring honor and glory to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, I love you. Um, if you need me, reach out. And uh, Lord willing, we'll see you next Thursday.